Hi everybody, it's Lynn, and this is Liam. What's up, guys? And this is the ins and outs with Lynn and Liam, uh, episode five, I think. Um, I oh shoot, I got my pen stuck in my hair. Oh no. Um, so if you watch our little web series, you know that we're usually like fun and silly, and we will be. But we wanted to make sure that before we started, we really um, lifted up the Black Lives Matter movement and encourage any of um, our white allies to you know get involved and play a role um, in addressing um, the police brutality and systemic racism that happens towards black people and if you don't know where to start we wanted to encourage you to go to our website tpcwny.org where we have put together all sorts of resources on how you could be a good ally and things to avoid in this time and so that is what we will encourage you to do now if you need more resources. Definitely. We to add, Liam? Uh, just that we stand with our, uh, you know, our employees, our coworkers of color. Um, you know, it's what happened to not just George Floyd, but so many people over and over and over again, people of color specifically, it's just heartbreaking. And, you know, we're educators and so we're here to educate, but also it's really important that we educate ourselves as you know as a white man i have to educate myself on a lot of these topics information so to make sure that i'm like truly understanding or not like it's understanding as much as i possibly can what people of color have to go through on a daily basis um not just when it comes to like dealing with police but when it comes to so many different aspects of their lives housing getting jobs you know uh, suspended from school all sorts of stuff yeah, and so we didn't want to not acknowledge that. Um, so yeah, but we also to, yeah we also want to we we want to recognize it. We want to understand it. We don't want to you know take a pause from it, but at the same time, we also want to give people maybe a break if they want it. Yeah, I would agree. Like. Especially with my article, if I'm going to go first, it's actually a really, um, so my article was, I found out about BuzzFeed quizzes this week, which I had never, BuzzFeed quizzes. I had never known these existed. No, I had no idea. And so like, you know, when everything is really overwhelming and everything like, it was just like too much. Sometimes you just need to like take a break from the universe. And so maybe a BuzzFeed quiz is what you need um, because most of them are so ridiculous. Um, the one that we're going to talk about today is how to determine who your soulmate is based on what foods you would buy off of a menu at a variety of fast food restaurants. And these are like the bougie fast food restaurants, not McDonald's, but like Chili's. Are they fast food? Um, I think they're called casual dining. Oh, I call them the bougie version of fast food, but sure, <laughs> casual, casual dining. Um, and so basically this quiz goes through, I think it's like nine options, and you pick which menu item you would select, and then at the end it tells you what type of person you're looking for. And so after my truest quiz, I got the lover, which means that I'm looking for, Liam, somebody who's an excellent listener, but not just about feelings and things that are happening, but also about romantic and sexy things. Mm. Like a true, well-rounded lover in every sense of the way is what my chili and Olive Garden selection say about me. So what were some of the things you chose from Chili's and Olive Garden? That's the thing I don't understand. So I am the lover, or I need the lover. I picked all of like the meat options. It felt like you think the lover would be desserts, right? But no, I also went back and I picked all desserts. And if you pick all desserts, you get the weirdo, which means that you are a weirdo and you need somebody who is also a weirdo. Um, I, mean, I, can I just like a lot of meats and stuff. like. Do I want country fried steak at Applebee's? Heck yes, I do, which is actually not steak, it's chicken, right? 
Yeah. No, yeah. it's it's steak. No, I think it's oh, country fried chicken. I'm sorry. Yeah, country fried steak is like they hammer out a nice like thick piece of steak into like a really thin thing, and then they bread it and fry it like you would it was chicken. Okay, well I was wrong, but I did pick the country fried chicken. Um, or like I think I pick I think I picked any serious meat option. I picked no seafood because I don't eat seafood. Um, I didn't pick like the Olive Garden breadsticks because I thought that was like cliche. I did pick the biscuits at um, Red Lobster because I love biscuits. But I don't think my food options line up with the lover. So what did you get? I got the one. Um, and it said, I am like Shania Twain's song, uh, you don't impress me, or that don't impress me much, where you know, you gotta do a lot to impress me and uh, you, like, just cause you're Brad Pitt doesn't mean like I'm down for you. Huh, what did you pick? What kind of foods? Um, I picked so a, a lot of meat and seafood options, none of the desserts. Um, I definitely didn't pick the breadsticks cause my first boyfriend, every time we went to Olive Garden would eat all my breadsticks and now I don't eat breadsticks as much anymore. At least I, I love those breadsticks. They're so good. And like you could fill up on the breadsticks and the soup and then he would just steal my freaking breadsticks and I wouldn't have any to fill up on. Even though they're limited. I don't know how he kept stealing all my unlimited. I think you mean the Zupa de Toscana or whatever. That's what the soup is called. There's a few different soups you can choose. The default one is like this like fake Italian sounding soup. Yeah, I think I like, um, yeah, is that the one with like the orzo in it? I think so, yeah. My sister loves it. Yeah, and then it shows like burger. Salad's good too, though. Have you had the salad? Did I have salad? No. They have a fire salad. That salad is delicious. So I almost I'm, picked it. I'm eating salad right now, and I eat salad a lot. But when I go out to a restaurant, I'm not. I never go out to a restaurant because I want to be healthy. I'm like, give me a burger, give me double fries, give me ice cream, like load me up. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Um. My husband got the mirror because I made my husband take it. I'm gonna pull it up for you right now to tell you what that is, which I actually don't think that I am compatible with my husband according to this quiz. Um, I also took a quiz of which Gryffindor I would be and I was serious. Which what you'll be? Um, which Gryffindor member? I got deep into the BuzzFeed quizzes this week. Um, so my husband got the mirror, which is you're looking for somebody who is like you personality wise. Why mess with the perfect formula if you are perfect? <laughs> um, you're in a good place right now and you need somebody who is just like you. What does that even mean? It means like you order from me. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, the other option that you could be is the friend. And if you pick a lot of seafood, you get the friend. Hmm. And that means like you're just looking for a, a friend partner. Yeah, just friend zoning everybody. The other thing is there was a quiz about which you pick nine scrunchies, which are those fluffy things you wear on your wrist. Yeah. And they'll tell you when you're going to meet your soulmate. And I'm going to meet mine at the end of the year. I'm going to meet, so I took the same quiz. I'm going to meet mine within the week. And let me tell you, there was a hard joke. What? It's gonna be hard during quarantine. I know, but I mean, I meet my soulmate every morning when I wake up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there was an option, like you've already met them, yeah. but you and I didn't pick the right scrunchies. No, but the, the, um, the scrunchies were really like dope scrunchie choices. Yeah, there are lots of options. Um, I picked all of the non-velvet ones because I don't like velvet. Hmm. I picked some of the pattern ones because I like patterns. Um, yeah, and then I went through and I picked the opposite. Did I already say this? I went through and I picked the opposite of everything I would have liked. And for the partner, um, the the real one, so you are the opposite of me. And for the scrunchies, I picked the opposite one. And in that one, I've already met my, my soulmate. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I don't know what this means, but it, it was fun. It was fun. And it's nice, like, break from work and from like everything going on, COVID. I do think 
that like your food choices or maybe not your food choices, but like the type of restaurants could tell you a thing or two about yourself and your soulmate. Like maybe if it was more diverse of types of restaurants, but they were all like really shitty. Oh, I shouldn't say, I'm sorry. They're all like really mediocre cash restaurants mm -hmm. where I think if you like switched it up a little, it might have been more accurate. Yeah, but I mean, that's hard to do on a national BuzzFeed poll, right? That's true. Maybe I should make a local one. Yeah, like, what, which of these restaurants do you go to in Niagara Falls and Buffalo? And I'll tell you who your soulmate is. <laughs> um, it also is funny to think that this is somebody's job. And so I clicked her name. And her whole job is to make either quizzes or lists. Huh. So, like, the thought that this woman, like, went through all these menus and, like, picked pictures and, like, hand-selected which food options, I think sounds like a pretty cool job. I'm also, I'm so happy that she picked pictures, too, because, like, I don't go to these restaurants, really, and so I had no idea what, like, half these things were. Yeah, that's true. And my favorite menu items from the one, from the few that I have been to, weren't even on the list. Like, at Applebee's, love their French onion soup, love their quesadilla burger, neither of those were on the list. I've never had French onion soup. Like, ever? No, but I think I would like it because I like beef broth and I like melted cheese. Jay makes it for me uh, at least once or twice a year. And he slow roast or slow like caramelizes the onions for like eight hours. Oh my God. It's just, I do I love caramelized onions. I do. And then like soup, caramelized onions, bread, cheese. What else is there? Yeah, I, I actually don't know why I've never had French onion soup because it is everything I like. I like soup, I like pumpernickel bread, I like onions, I like melted cheese. Um, okay, so we encourage you all to take this quiz and comment below what, who your soulmate is, depending on what you would like from Olive Garden and a various amounts of other kind of crappy restaurants. Yeah. Okay, Liam, take it away. Uh, so my... Um, article, the, uh, I decided to kind of like think about, um, I was looking for articles about like LGBTQ folk, um, and Netflix turns out has like the most inclusive, uh, genre, not genre, like most inclusive, like group of TV shows, movies, everything, um, out of any sort of network. Uh, and not just for like queer representation, which I love. Uh, but also like disabled representation, uh, black and POC representation. Um, you know, I, they just have like a stellar amount of content uh, that covers like so many broad areas. And like a couple weeks ago, there was this like whole thing going around the internet, like, uh, oh, Netflix, do you really have to have like queer representation in every single one of your shows? And Netflix was like, yeah, we do. Like, <laughs> get over it. And I love it. Um, I was watching this one show the other day. Uh, I love like fantasy history show kind of things. And I was watching one called um, Letter to the King. And there's this like underlying plot between these, like, these two side characters where like they kind of seem like romantic, but nothing like for sure. And then like the second to last episode, they're like, I like you. And he's like, I like you. And I was like, oh my God, where were these shows when I was a kid? I had like queer as folk and will and grace as my representation yeah and like the one gay character on sex in the city yeah and all of them were terrible like yeah they were like fulfilling all the stereotypes yeah like no healthy relationships no all drug use all club use like all that kind of thing and that's what i thought being gay was when i was a kid hmm yeah um yeah i actually don't really watch a lot of netflix i rewatch the same things over and over again um but if you think about it, like they really did, like they started off, they built so much success and now they have so many things. Mm -hmm. And the article talks about this, like part of the reason they have so much uh, representation is because they have so much original content um, where a lot of places like HBO only creates like a small amount. And even so, like their content is not diverse in any way. No. Um, I, not related to Netflix. The only thing I watch, I watch like Mad Men, Grey's Anatomy, well, really any medical drama. 
And then um, I started watching Miss Maisel, but I haven't finished it because, do you watch Maisel? Uh, uh, no, I, I just talked to someone yesterday about the show, but I have not watched it yet. It's very good. But I have the, I prematurely mourn the end of things. And so I won't watch it because I know once I watch it, I will have no more episodes available. Um, but anyway, not related, but um, do you watch Grey's Anatomy? Uh, I watched like, the first few seasons. The season finale where the guy blows up, uh, I stopped watching after that. That's like second season. Okay. Um, they have become real. So the first like probably eight seasons were, there was like a little of inclusivity, but nothing purposeful. And like the last few seasons, it's like, they are social justice warriors. Like they're doing surgeries to like transform uh, vaginas into penises. And they're like, just like talking about every issue possible. And so it does make me think like, yeah, I had none of, I had like full house and step-by-step. Step, and luckily now teenagers have all of this quality content. Definitely. And like, so not even just like with queer representation, but like, um, disabled representation on Netflix, especially as like, like uh, this guy, I forgot his name, but he's gay and uh, I think he has like multiple sclerosis maybe. And he has like a whole like series on Netflix about his life. Um, and another show I watched, like uh, there's a deaf guy who is gay. And there's like, I don't know, there's a like great representation, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of shows featuring Asian people these days, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, well, how do you think that impacts <coughs> teenagers today? Um, I don't know. I think it probably helps them do so. I don't know if teenagers like watch these things on Netflix. Netflix originals. Yeah, like are are they watching Netflix originals or are like adults watching Netflix originals? Hmm. Same thing. With I don't the know. I remember when I was teaching, and was it called On My Block? Came out. I think it's a Netflix original. They all were going ham for this show, and I had no idea what it was. So maybe certain ones, if it's applicable. They all watch Big Mouth, right? Teenagers all watch Big Mouth. Yeah, I definitely hear a lot of them talk about Big Mouth. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's high quality if you're talking about sex education. Oh, yeah. Um, like, how um, do you think you would behave differently if you had had better representation? I think, um, I don't know. I think maybe... I, I was a not a very good uh, boyfriend when I was a kid. And I think part of that was probably like representation and not having like a sense of like what healthy relationships were in a gay sense. Cause like everything was just kind of like go out, have sex, you know. And maybe I would have like, I, maybe not even just like with that part, but also just with like what it means to be gay. So like when I was a kid, right, uh, I always felt uncomfortable like playing sports, talking to, um, especially in like high school, not so much like middle school and stuff, but in high school, I felt like uncomfortable like playing sports. And like, I kind of like fell into this gay stereotype for a few years until like I grew up and I realized like, oh, I can be like just who, I, like I can be gay and whoever I want to be at the same time. Um, and so I like this representation because it shows like, just a wide ranging, like they have gay characters who are also jocks and football stars. They have gay characters who like are artists. And it's just like all over the place. And I think it's just nice to see kids don't have to like stereotype themselves. Yeah, that's really interesting to think about. Cause I know a lot of like gay kids when I was like, even like still nowadays too, but when I was a kid and I came out and my, like other people I knew came out, they often jumped on this like really flamboyant, um gay kind of train which is great if, you, if that's you like do you but at the same time i feel like some of us just kind of got like we thought like that's what we had to be to be gay and like we mm -hmm. wanted to be out and proud and so we were extra flamboyant uh but you can be out and proud and however you want to be yeah wow that's so interesting um hmm. now i'm just gonna think about that for a while yeah it's, Who do you think is the first gay character you saw on television? Probably Will and Grace. Maybe Queer as Folk. Yeah, I'm trying to think about that. I re remember that Seinfeld episode where they think that Jerry and 
is it George or Kramer or Gay and the whole like not that there's anything wrong with that thing came out that's like the first mention of being gay that I can think about in television I never really watched Seinfeld so oh but and then Clear Eye for the Straight Guy came out do you remember the original Clear Eye I didn't watch that really no I feel like that was a pretty big turning point I mean it featured five gay men and people went bonkers for that yeah. show but even like those five gay men right they were all the stereotypes were, yeah like right like oh you have to dress like really well because you're gay yeah or yeah. because you're gay you can you are automatically like really good at telling people how to dress and like yeah. oh you can decorate the house you're gay it's like liam are you good at decorating your house I mean, yeah, but not because I'm gay. On that bird painting is maybe not. That's a original from a friend of mine. She painted it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, so. Sorry, I didn't mean to come for your pals. It's all right. Um, yeah, I can't think of any gay shows I watched when I was little. Yeah, and I mean, like, the Seinfeld thing, gay I feel like there, there are probably a few shows that did, like, a similar kind of Seinfeld thing. Where, like, they made, like, jokes out of being gay, but also, like, it's okay to be gay, but we're also going to joke about it. Um, yeah. But then, like, the real, like, representation I saw was Queer Spoke. I remember, like, uh, I would, like, stay up and, like, sneak watching it on Showtime whenever, like, there was free Showtime. Yeah, I don't know this show, but I know it exists. I've never watched it. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a good show, but it was for stereotypical, for different kinds of stereotype gay people, uh, doing drugs, having sex with multiple partners, and not caring much about it. And one of the main storylines was like, uh, this like barely legal 17 year old having a super like messed up relationship with this uh, 30 year old. Oh. Yeah. I guess the difference is that you don't want shows to have gay people in it and the whole storyline revolves around them being gay, right? You want them to to just be gay in the show and have a bunch of different storylines. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, you want like, you know, characters with depth. Yeah, you don't want like a show with a disabled, a kid with a disability and the whole show is like life as a disabled kid. It's like, hey, this is a kid, he, they have a disability and they are living all these different storylines. Yeah, that's interesting to think about. Yeah, it's part of like their character. Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay. Did Jay, by the way, take the quiz? He did not. Jay's been crazy busy at work this week. There's stuff going on. Um, like he had a phone call last night from nine thirty to eleven o'clock at night. So Do you he think just, you're food compatible? Um, probably. We both. Uh, I mean, like, def- we're definitely food compatible. We literally like whenever we go out to eat, we're always just like, yes, this, 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 this. Uh, me and Jay, we like, we'll freaking just shove food into our faces until we're about to puke. Do you think he is the lover, the real one, the weirdo, the friend, or the fifth one, which I couldn't figure out how to get, the leader? Oh. The leader, I think, is eating a lot of cheese covered things, to be honest. I do. I mean, we both love cheese covered things. <laughs> but I think he's probably, uh, probably similar to me. He's probably close to like the one. He probably choose like a lot of meat choices, some seafood choices, not too much dessert. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, we will be back again next week um, with a sixth episode of the ins and outs. Leave a comment with what quiz you or what who's your soulmate or when you're going to meet your lover based on the scrunchie that you would pick. Um, we'll put links to both of those in the uh, in the description. And then maybe comment in the comments like what shows that, what was the first show that you watched as a young person that featured a gay character? Definitely. Or shows that you just think nowadays have a great representation. Yeah, that'd be fun. One thing that we could do, Liam, is we could host Netflix parties. Do you know about these Netflix parties? Uh, yeah, we did it um, one time for why, me, when first uh, the Tiger King first came out. Oh, I wasn't invited. I'm sorry. No, it was like me and um, I. <laughs> but one thing we could do is we could do some Netflix parties with like maybe shows that feature LGBT characters. Yeah, that'd be cool, especially for Pride Month. Yeah. Oh, before we go, I wanted to just um, speaking of sharing good uh, um, 
things that are available. This is not related to what we talked about, but it is related to like learning more and being better in the fight against racism. Um, the, the movie Just Mercy, have you ever heard of this? I heard of it, I haven't watched it yet. Well, it's available for free all month on Amazon, Google Play, and Apple TV um, because they want as many people to watch it. And so you don't have to pay to rent it, it's free. And it would be a good opportunity for anybody out there who is trying to learn more or who has a group of young people and they want to talk about it to maybe bring up some conversation. Definitely. That's cool. Cool. Okay. This was great. Bye, Liam. Yep. Bye. See you later. See you, everybody.